All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is YouTube, this is Pastor Dow. This is a, a video that has been long time coming and in the making. Um, the reason being is because it, it's a very hurtful video, uh, but it's also a video of stark reality. It needs to be said, a record needs to be made out there because you know I'm, I'm experiencing this again and again and again. And if there's anybody out there that ever speaks against the American mindset, there's nobody out there that talks about this Western culture and what they have done to our minds more than I do. I mean, search the internet and see it. I'm sure you have philosophies, theologies and everything else, uh, psychologies and everything else, but I'm telling you, I try my best to, to get people to understand and to comprehend. You cannot continue to do the things that you have always done and expect change. So listen to me. Please listen to me. See, in this country, we think that we're really truly hearing, but we're not. Um, there are all types of challenges in front of us. But let me go ahead and get right to the scope of this video, okay? Because I'm sincerely concerned, okay? In the Bible, and I am going to use words and terms that are easily understood. I'm not going to use Hebrew terms. I'm going to use English vernacular. I'm going to use English etymology so that we can understand. Because whether we like it or not, we grew up in this country and we have been trained and coerced and manipulated to function a certain way. We've been programmed. Um, but, you know, in order to break that, that, that type of... Uh, um, programming, we first have really truly have got to accept principles, real true biblical principles. What we have is, is we have people who will get healed of sicknesses and diseases. Some of them are so excited about being healed of sickness and diseases that they will go to the doctor where, you know, they are the ones who diagnosed them with the sickness or disease in the first place. They will go to the physician um, and they're happy because they, they know they've been healed and delivered. They will go to the physician, uh, run a blood sample, do a whole entire report. I mean, a whole type of scan of their whole body and everything. And they'll bring back to straightway doctor's verification signed by doctors that their disease, their sickness is no longer there. We, we get that all the time. I always tell people, I want y'all to listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me if you can. I always tell people, go and sin no more. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I know. Full well how we think in this world. You see, if we get healed of some sickness, we get healed of some disease, the first thing we do is we give the Father thanks, but then we go right back out into the world again only to live the same way we've always had. And we never change nothing about our lifestyle or this, this right here, this mind at all. And because... We do not change the function of our life because repentance is more than just words that drop off the edge of your lips. Repentance is a complete 100% turnabout and change of the whole entire person. That's what real true repentance is. And what we do in this country is we, we you know, it's just like we, we have been so drugged up in this country that if we go get a shot, the shot takes care of the symptoms. It takes care of a lot of things for a period of time. And we assume we are healed. But you know what we're missing more than anything, the greatest step? When you go to the doctor looking to be healed, you're not repenting. Repenting for what? Going to the doctor for being sick? Well, people get sick all the time. But have you studied the Bible? Have you studied the scripture? I mean, diseases which are no more, nothing more than demonic spirits. Now, if you in your theology don't believe that, then guess what? <laughs> you have already bound yourself and put limits on yourself from being able to discover one of the greatest secrets to a miracle that there is. 
Because, you know, once you understand that diseases are demonic spirits, then you can ask the Father and the power will be available. But as long as you hold your theological position and you still are doing the same old things that church folk always do, and you notice the Father ain't moving, nothing's changing. But we, we, we go out and we have been mind numb to the function and reality of the word. So we'll go out here and we'll, we'll um, get a shot and we never repent. We go to the doctor looking for relief, but we never repent of anything. We don't think there's anything wrong with us. It's amazing. But yet and still, we're experiencing a lot of discomfort in our body. I've had people come here. I spent three hours ministering to them who has full-blown fibromyalgia and other diseases. And I will clearly tell them, every one of them will tell you that I've said this, if they will be truthful, because we seem to be having a lot of problem with people being very truthful. I would tell them, don't go back out there and live the way that you previously lived. Because if you do that, you think you had it bad when you came here and Jesus healed you and delivered you. You haven't seen nothing yet. If you experience this healing, experience this deliverance, and then you go right back out there and you continue on life and business as usual, you're going to get a worse thing upon you. And it's going to be twice as hard to deliver you this time than it was the first time. And most of them, because it is mine, what happens is that, that mind you, these are people who have doctor verification that they've been healed and delivered and set free. And what happens is they don't take heed to my warning, nor do they take heed to the warning of the, of the Messiah that spoke about this in the Gospels. So they're, they're happy, they're giddy, they go return their lifestyle, and then the next thing you know, slowly but surely, the symptoms start creeping back up. Doubt enters into the mind. And, but we never change our lifestyle. Sudden fear comes up on us. But we never have changed our lifestyle. We didn't pay attention to the preacher, Pastor Dow. We didn't pay attention to what the word says. No, because why? We did not, most importantly, more than anything, we did not change this mind. No, no. -uh. But we continued on in life and continue on in this way and in this world as usual. You know, I'm going to read you a couple of passages here real quick before I continue on because I'm going to scripture study. I'm going to be talking about the spirit of rejection. If you want to, you're more than happy. www.online-church.org. You're more welcome to come if you want. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, every Tuesday. Anyway, John 8, 11 said, and she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. That was a woman in adultery, okay? He had forgiven of her sin. But look, the admonishment was, don't go return to that same lifestyle. Now, over in John 5, this was a man um, that, that had a bed. And it says, and he answered him, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. This man couldn't walk. He had, he had a bed. Then they asked him, what man is that which said to thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he, and he that was healed was not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself, look at this, away and the multitudes in that place. Afterwards, Jesus founded him in the temple and said unto him, behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. I receive a lot of persecution because people get healed. You can go and look in the videos and archives. You can see testimony after testimony after testimony. People getting healed. But the, the people are mind numb today. The one thing they're not doing is paying attention to my warning. They're definitely not paying attention to the Messiah's warning. When we clearly tell you, because we know what's going to happen. I know how you American, English-minded, raised people think. You think just like when you go get a, a shot at the doctor. You think you're fine and good. You go ahead and continue on your life business as usual. No, 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 no. You cannot do that in this walk. <coughs> well, Jesus told the man, go and sin no more. And he gave him a warning lest the worst thing come upon you. 
There's a parable in the, in the gospels that says, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, you know what that unclean spirit does? He walking through dry places. It seeks rest. It can't find none. Then you know what it says from there? It says, you know what? I'm going to return to my house. It believes that your body is its residence. It's a boat. It's your house. It belongs to, your body belongs to that spirit. That's what that spirit believes. When it comes, the spirit, that evil spirit, find it empty, swept, and garnished. The problem is everybody convinced you there ain't no evil spirits today. That's why you stay in your condition. That's why your mind stays the same. That's why you receive no power. You receive no understanding and there's no change. You're not going to read a script, a, a, a spirit out. You're not going to study a spirit out. No, you're not going to classroom a spirit out. It don't work like that. You're not going to rebuke no spirit if you ain't got no power to rebuke the spirit because they only obey authority. The spirit says, you know what? He returned to his house. He found an empty swept in garnish and then it goes away. You know what it does? It goes away. It's going to get reinforcements. It's going to find seven more other spirits more wicked than it was. And then it's going to return to your body, which is considered your house, its house. And it's going to find, you know, you're going to find the last state of that man is worse than the first. The problem with many of you that receive healing and deliverance, especially those of you who have doctor verification and have testified of it. The problem with you is you're religious. You don't change his mind right here. You go return to your vomit. And then next thing you know, Satan puts thoughts in your head. Were they really healed? Were they really delivered? Were they really set free? Was this report really true? Yes, it was. You know what's false? You. You were false. You know why? Because you didn't think that you had to change your mind, change your lifestyle, change your heart. You didn't think that you had to be sanctified. You didn't think you had to be set apart. You didn't think that, 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 um, that, that it wasn't for you to actually change everything about yourself. Oh, everybody else has to do it, but you don't need to. Uh, uh, uh. You cannot continue the things that you have always done and expect change. And some of you, you've been healed and you've been delivered and you've been set free. And all these other people sitting around who experience you testifying your healing and your deliverance, they're sitting back waiting and watching. And you know what? They're not, they're not spiritual, but you know what they're going to do? As soon as you talk about your disease or your sickness has returned and has come back, is no longer in remission, that's, that's how they talk today. The first thing you know, people are going to say, yeah, he was never really healed. These are unbelievers. That's their language. That's the way they talk. Your problem is you don't know what real true repentance is. You're too stubborn and too hard-headed to listen to someone who is speaking to you and telling you the truth. Look at all the rest of these religious relics out here. See how many people are testifying about the goodness of the Most High and people are really truly getting healed because they're powerless today. Not many, not many at all. But I'll tell you the truth. i tell you the truth. Yah is not mocked. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow up, that shall he also reap. And most of you think you can mock the Most High. You think you can mock God. You think you can come to him, come to his men of Yah, and receive healing, receive deliverance. And, and you think you're going to go right back out there and continue on in your sin. See, the problem is today, many of you don't know what sin is. You see, if we tell you sin is a transgression of the law, you automatically, especially if you're in the arenas I'm in, these people think the Torah, the law, and all this other stuff, and they don't understand. Somebody need to tell you that being bitter is a sin. Somebody need to tell you that being jealous and envious is a sin. Somebody need to tell you that resentment and resenting others is a sin. Somebody needs to tell you when you hate yourself, you're sinning. Bottom line, see, these are the things you do not call sin. You call sin fornication, adultery, lying, stealing, you know, the big sins. You know the things you call big sins. All this other stuff is become your nature and therefore it deceives you. And because you're deceived, you're eating the fruit of your own way because you simply can't get this mind to accept the fact and the truth that you have returned to sin. And most of you have got sins on you that function in your life that come from generational curses. Diabetes. That's just one 
generational curse sin that it comes upon you because it's in your generations. Arthritis. It's in the generations. Your mama had it. Your grandmama had it. Now you got it. It's, you see, it's a, and, and you ain't going to get too many people out here telling you about this stuff. Believe me. I know what I'm saying. First of all, with a religious mind who don't believe in anything spiritual at all but letters, you ain't going to penetrate them. You have ears to hear. I hope that you can hear what Pastor Dow is saying because I am a viable deliverance ministry. I, I minister, I preach about, teach about this stuff all the time. I've been living it and have, by the power of Jesus, healed a lot of people throughout the years. But I tell you, there's an epidemic coming and there's an epidemic taking place today where people are returning back to their lifestyles and they're not repenting of sin. It's just a sad thing. Somebody need to tell you that hating yourself is a sin. I said enough. I, I re it's hot in here. I need to go. My office is burning up, man. I'm just sweating up a storm in here. But you know what? I really truly meant no harm. Um, but I know there's no way that you're going to say these words that, that it's actually um, going to come across in any way, shape, fashion, or form easy to be received and understood because I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just, I just told you the truth. Now the ball is in your court. It's up to you. Um, because some of you um, who have been healed of sickness and disease, you, more likely many of you may end up back in my in front of me again. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but I'm going to rebuke the fire out of you. I'm going to reprove you very harsh and very bad. Am I doing it because I want to hurt your feelings? No. Some way, somehow, what can I say or what can I do to penetrate this mind up here that is so religious? You know, we love putting on diadems and wearing teeth seats. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I wear fringes. Uh, and, and we become so externally religious that we're no good for the kingdom. Ah. Uh, I'm going to say it again. What the Messiah said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come up on you. And some of you, you've had the worst thing come up on you. And I said it's a shame because while you rejoiced at the power, you mocked the Messiah in your life. And that's just the same. And you know what? It's called a law of sowing and reaping. You have got to learn how to repent and repent the right way. And that's just the truth. And that's the true straight way. I hope you have ears to hear. The King is coming.